Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 15th of May. India announces Rs 1 trillion agri infrastructure fund in third tranche of stimulus package. Traders in Gilgit, Baltistan protest against discrimination amid lockdown. And nine new COVID-19 cases take Nepal's tally to 258. And now for all the details. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Friday unveiled third tranche of a $266 billion special economic package stimulus to support the economy battered by the coronavirus pandemic. She announced funds for farm gate infrastructure for farmers, a scheme for the formalization of micro food enterprises, among others. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman unveiled the third tranche of stimulus to support the economy battered by the coronavirus pandemic. Friday's tranche focused on agriculture, allied sectors, fisheries, infrastructure, logistics and ramping up storage. Sitaraman introduced Rs 10,000 crore scheme for the formalization of microfood enterprise, a scheme that promotes Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision for vocal for local with global outreach. We shall be providing a fund of 10,000 crores. It's a scheme which uh, will get executed with a cluster-based approach. I recall Prime Minister Modi when he spoke on the 12th of May, speaking about be vocal for local. This is one of the ways in which the local capacities, the local value-added product can have a global outreach. Apart from introducing agri-infrastructure fund for farm gate infrastructure for farmers, Rs 13,000 crore for national animal disease control were also announced. Indian Prime Minister had earlier this week announced $266 billion special economic package for the country to become self-reliant and deal with COVID-19 crisis. Moving on. Shopkeepers in Pakistan occupied Gilgit Baltistan held a protest blaming local authorities of doing discrimination among traders and their shops amid the coronavirus lockdown. The protesters said the authorities are allowing shops and other markets of the country to remain open with designated time but not allowing them to run their business at all. Shopkeepers in Gilgit Baltistan's Northern Light Infantry or NLI market recently held a protest against the discrimination by local administration amid coronavirus lockdown. The protesters claimed the authorities are allowing shops in other markets of the country to remain open with designated time even under the lockdown, but their shops are closed for over a month. The shop owners demanded their shops to be allowed to open for a specific time and warned the provincial as well as federal government of continuing the protest in case of not being heard. Pakistan occupied Gilgit Baltistan as of Friday reported over 500 cases of the novel coronavirus, which locals claim is due to the lack of proper healthcare facilities in the region. The lockdown imposed to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus has affected the livelihoods for thousands of fishermen along the shores of Pakistan's port city of Karachi. Many have set their boats on the shores while a large number of fishermen have suffered a decline in incomes.
The livelihoods for thousands of fishermen along the shores of Pakistan's port city of Karachi has been affected due to the lockdown imposed to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus. Their boats remain standing on the jetties as their fishing business has been closed and they are unable to head out to the sea for fishing, forcing them to be jobless with no income or decline in their incomes. They had been struggling to feed their families. Left with no work, Fisherman Sadar, whose income has declined drastically and now earns less than $2 a day, said he is unable to feed his family. The lockdown has forced him to celebrate the holy month of Ramadan in uncharacteristically subdued fashion. One time he ate, and the other time he didn't eat. He is doing this. He doesn't have any work now. He doesn't have any work now. He doesn't have any work now. अभी तो लॉकडाउन के वजह से बिल्कुल बंद है। अभी समुद्र जा नहीं सकते मच्छी मारने के लिए, मच्छी पकड़ने के लिए जा नहीं सकेगा। अभी क्या करूं? Pakistan began a phased lifting of its countrywide lockdown last week, despite a rising rate of cases, a move pushed primarily by fears of an economic meltdown. The country has reported 36,865 COVID-19 cases and 791 deaths. In news from Afghanistan, the United States has blamed Islamic State militants for a gruesome hospital attack in Afghanistan this week, and it renewed calls for Afghans to embrace a troubled peace push with the Taliban insurgency. The U.S. Special Representative Zalme Khalilzad on Friday blamed Islamic State for recent attacks in Kabul hospital and a suicide bombing in Nangarhar province that killed scores of people, saying that the group opposes a peace deal between the Afghan government and the Taliban. In a statement issued on Twitter, he called on Afghans to not fall into the Islamic State's trap by letting the incidents further disrupt peace efforts in the country. An affiliate of the Islamic State militant group had claimed responsibility for the Nangarhar bombing, however no one has claimed the hospital attack. Though the Taliban denied involvement in either attacks, the government accused the group of fostering an environment in which terrorism thrives or of working with other militant groups who could have been involved, straining U.S. efforts to bring the insurgents and Afghan government together. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani earlier this week ordered the military to switch to offensive mode against the Taliban following the attacks. However, the Taliban loaded a truck with explosive and blew it up near a court in the eastern Afghan city of Gardez on Thursday, killing at least five people. The horrific attacks are a huge setback for US President Donald Trump's long-shot peace deal in Afghanistan and has caused a skepticism over the promise of a peace deal brokered between the US and the Taliban in talks that didn't include Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's government. More in news from Afghanistan. Coronavirus pandemic has destroyed the global economy and millions have lost their jobs due to lockdowns. In Afghanistan, a widow who lost her husband in a suicide attack has been living on about $3 a day to raise her children and is struggling to survive. Ever since her husband was killed seven years ago in a suicide attack, Dilkha Sultani has been living on about $3 a day to raise her four young children. She washes clothes for a living, but ever since the coronavirus pandemic stalled Afghanistan's already fragile economy, job opportunities have completely dried up. Sultani, who lives in a small rented back alley shack with her children in capital Kabul, regularly queues up for food aid when available, but she said that is not enough to get by. The spike in food prices which has come in the Muslim holy month of Ramadan is a harsh blow for sole breadwinners like Sultani in a country reeling from the decades-old conflict between US-led forces and Taliban insurgents. 
اگه پدرم زنده می بود ما در این روزگار نمی بودیم در خانه نمی بودیم مگه در این مبارک رمضان هیچ چیز خال نداریم اگه پدرم می بود خوب نان می خوردیم خوب غذا داشته باشیم خوب به خانه می داشتیم خوب به زندگی خوب مرام می داشته باشیم Most of urban Afghanistan has been under a government imposed lockdown since mid March The country has a total of 5639 cases of the coronavirus with 136 deaths according to health ministry figures on Friday Nepal's COVID-19 tally reached 258 after nine new cases were confirmed on Friday by the health ministry The new cases were confirmed through PCR tests Nepal's health ministry on Friday confirmed nine new cases of COVID-19 infection, taking the national tally to 258. The new cases were confirmed through PCR tests. According to the ministry statement, the cases were from Makavanpur and wards 1, 2 and 3 of Narayanpur rural municipality in Banke district. Earlier on Thursday, six individuals including a 6-year-old girl from Kapilvastu had tested positive for COVID-19. 38 people including doctors nurses and others who came in close contact with her have been quarantined with zero mortalities number of successful recoveries in the himalayan nation stands at 36 meanwhile nepal is on an extended nationwide lockdown till may 18 and suspended international flights and cross border movement with the neighboring countries like india and china until may 31 to stem the spread of the deadly coronavirus Moving on to news from Bangladesh. The novel coronavirus has been gathering pace in recent days in densely populated Bangladesh where over 18,500 people have been infected. The deadly virus has now also entered the crowded Rohingya camps which aid workers claim could be a potential humanitarian disaster if not controlled. Bangladesh as of Friday reported 18,863 COVID-19 cases with 283 associated deaths despite a countrywide lockdown. A total of 3,361 people have recovered from the deadly disease. The novel coronavirus infection has been gathering pace in recent days in the densely populated country. The Rohingya refugee in Cox's Bazar was also tested positive on Thursday. There were two positive cases from the refugee camp area, one from the refugee population and the other from the surrounding population. Aid workers had earlier warned of a potential humanitarian disaster if there is a significant outbreak in the refugee camps, home to more than a million refugees in Cox's Bazar. Some 1.1 million Rohingyas live in refugee camps in Cox's Bazar. Of them, around 750,000 took shelter in Bangladesh since a brutal military crackdown was launched in Myanmar in 2017. In a recent effort, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Thursday also announced an additional of over 235 million US dollar stimulus package to assist the needy including unemployed youth and rural population. Factories in India are facing a significant amount of difficulty in running their operations as they are being allowed to reopen amid the coronavirus lockdown but with less workforce with less people at work the production has also decreased Factory owners in India are experiencing several troubles after resuming production in their units as the government has eased one of the toughest lockdowns imposed to stem the spread of coronavirus smartphone maker lava is among the early birds to have restarted partial manufacturing at its factory on the outskirts of capital new delhi with barely 600 of its 3500 workforce lava is a small player in india's booming mobile communications industry and is seen as a poster child for prime minister narendra modi's ambitious effort to make india a global hub for electronics manufacturing so before lockdown we used to produce around 60000 phones in a day now we are producing around 15000 phones in a day indian government has partially started to pull back restrictions imposed under the lockdown that has left millions out of work and stranded in cities far from home while infections keep rising The third phase of India's coronavirus lockdown is scheduled to end on May 17. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.